Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the paper I'm going to present is on attitude of Qatari man and woman towards violence against wife. You know that uh, this study stands out for several reasons. First thing, uh, there are not many studies on gender attitude. Oh, sorry. There are not many studies on Gen, uh, gender uh, attitude for gender violence because uh, in, the, in, in this region, because this uh, topic is considered sensitive. Uh, actually, before we even uh, start collecting data for this study, we are concerned whether we should, uh, we should f uh, go forward to collect data on these uh, sensitive issues, but it worked out very fine. And second thing, another uh, important aspect is that most of the studies on attitude toward gender violence, uh, data for those kind of studies are collected from women only. So you don't get the men's perspective. Since uh, domestic violence is between a man and woman, so it's better to get uh, both uh, uh, parties' perspective on what they think about uh, 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 violence against uh, uh, women. And thirdly, there are uh, some uh, uh, studies, uh, those are like qualitative or like uh, done on very small populations, uh, but our uh, data come from a national representative survey. So, there has been many studies, seminar, conferences on uh, gender violence. Uh, according to WHO report, latest report in 2013, globally, 30% of all women are affected by domestic violence and it pervades all corner of the world. It's not like a developing country or Muslim countries uh, issue, so it is everywhere. So it is also important because it has adverse consequences for women's and child's health. It forms significant barriers to uh, women's empowerment. Uh, that's why it is recognized worldwide as a violation of basic human rights uh, of women. So violence against uh, women takes many forms, and wife beating is the most uh, common form of physical violence against women. There are only a few studies in the Middle East and North uh, of, uh, Africa that has data on prevalence of wife beating. Available data from this area uh, show that at least one out of three women is beaten by their husband in their lifetime. So white beating studies uh, can be broadly divided into two groups. It's two wives and other, other studies are like on attitude towards uh, wife beating. Uh, our study is focuses, uh, focuses on attitude towards wife beating, not actual experience of gender violence. So why it is important to study attitude toward wife beating? Like they uh, uh, point out here, social norms or attitude that condone or excuse domestic violence may place women at greater risk of becoming victims. It also uh, help to understand the actual prevalence of wife beating in the society because if you, if you try to collect data uh, on gender violence, in most societies, uh, women usually don't report violence if the violence is uh, perpetrated by the husband or family members because it's like a kind of uh, considered as a domestic matter, not to talk about all those things. So in that case, to understand this, if, you, if we ask that, that woman about her attitude, maybe that she can uh, give you the answer and from that you can just guess what the level of violence in that society. So it, it can be a very good indicator of a status of women uh, in a society. So as you see from this graph is that uh, these things, uh, gender violence is everywhere, every part of the world. It is not like only limited to certain uh, part of the a globe, and we, as you can see that uh, uh, slightly more than 50% of the women in MENA area uh, 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 think that husband and wife partner is justified for wife beating.
So there is a wide variation in, in the acceptance of wife beating in, 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 in this part of the world. In Egypt and, and Turkey, about 40% of the uh, ever married women believe that husbands are sometimes justified in beating their wives. And while in Jordan, 90% of the ever married Jordanian women agreed that uh, wife beating was justified under certain conditions. So what do we know about gender-based violence in Qatar? Fortunately, we have some very good studies, uh, all done by uh, uh, Dr. Al Ghanim of Qatar University, and uh, two, two of the studies was sponsored by Supreme Council of Family Affairs. Mm. So I think though they have a very good, interesting finding, but I'm not going to uh, 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 tell details about that. So only that you can see that the 2006 studies, it, 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 that study was done on uh, 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 students in Qatar University, and they found that 23% of the uh, students are subjected to violence, those who participated in the study. So now, that's the actual uh, data. Uh, Dr. Kaltam Sajai was about the actual uh, violence against women in Qatar. But what about the attitude towards gender-based violence in Qatar? What do we know? Actually, there is no study so far, uh, but there are three surveys that collected data on attitude toward uh, wife beating, and all, uh, actually all these three uh, surveys were done by SASTI, the organization I work for at Qatar University. So this study is based on 2012 uh, Qatar Omnibus Survey. The objective of this study is to assess the level of justification of wife beating in Qatar to examine the reasons for justification, to study gender differences in attitude toward wife beating, and to examine the factors that are associated with attitude toward wife beating. So how the socioeconomic uh, demographic factors are related to uh, uh, attitude toward wife beating? So for this, we use uh, one conceptual model developed by Rani and others. So according to that model, uh, in a patriarchal society, uh, gender norms and, uh, uh, and the, any social norms are uh, actually shaped by the keen-based uh, social groups. These are an and it transmits from generation to generation. So people learn about uh, all these things from their own, 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 own king-based uh, uh, networks and social groups. But the, there are also uh, some institution outside that uh, kinship-based uh, network that we think uh, that according to this model, th those institutions are supposed to be more egalitarian and those, uh, those institutions also uh, expose the individuals to more non-conformist ideas about, about the gender roles and, and gender attitudes. So then, so the model is like that. Uh, in, in, a, in a patriarchal society, the degree of support for the uh, wife beating will be shaped by the patriarchal ideology of that society. But individual factors sometimes can uh, modify that attitude through some mechanisms. For example, uh, they said that it can be, it can be uh, uh, modified by, uh, like, I mean, the individual factors may operate mainly via three mechanisms. One is by producing a conflict between reality and a normative belief in male superiority, by exposing individuals to more egalitarian social networks and authority structures other than kinship-based ones, and by exposing individuals to non-conformist ideas through modern media and wider social networks beyond kinship-based networks. For example, suppose education institution. Those who go to the education, they are exposed to two things. One is Education institutions are thought to be uh, egalitarian uh, institution where you get equal treatment, theoretically. And also, education institution is supposed to uh, 
give you uh, 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 more ideas about uh, uh, not like a like a con you know, it, it doesn't confine you to certain ideas. It it opens up the world for you and ideas for you. So so it, when it, so it means that those who are educated they are uh, f because of uh, according to this model are uh, supposed uh, are are expected to uh, be not supporting like uh, uh, white beating or something like that. So again, uh, at the same time, like uh, I will talk about other factors, those who uh, are, are uh, we consider in this model, like suppose, so education, employment, association, membership of a voluntary organization or exposure to the uh, uh, traditional or social media, all those things can influence, uh, can modify your attitude toward wife beating beyond your social, uh, beyond you, what you learn from your uh, patriarchal societal values and other things. So as I said, the data is come from, uh, came from 2012 Qatar Omnibus Survey uh, done by Qatar University. And we have a sample, national representative sample of 700 73 Qataris, it combines about 50% men and women, and the data was collected in 2011. So now, how we measure attitude towards white beating? So we followed the methods used by the demographic and health surveys. Demographic, sorry, demographic and health survey is a, like a survey, a big survey that uh, collect data in almost about like around 60 to 70 countries, uh, all about the mostly in developing countries. So they develop all these uh, uh, methods to uh, measure attitude toward white beatings. According to this method, in most cases, transgression or violation of prevailing gender roles triggers white beating. So you are, uh, uh, the women are expected to do certain things, and if they, do, they do, don't do it, then it triggers uh, uh, some kind of physical uh, uh, violence to to discipline women or or uh, wives. So in the survey, we asked the questions that it, uh, we we gave them we gave the respondent like six scenario. Like uh, if uh, we asked if wife goes out to market without telling husband, do you justify uh, beating wife? if wife visit friends without telling. So these are like all six scenarios we gave them, and we asked them whether they justify uh, uh, wife beating on, 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 uh, on those conditions. So now, if anybody said yes on any of these questions, that yes, I justify, we categorize them, that person justify wife beating. So that's why we create a binary variable who justify and who, who, who didn't justify. And we have like, uh, have like uh, five explanatory variables. We use age, we use education completed, we use current employment, membership in a voluntary organizations, and exposure to online social networking media. About uh, online social networking media, we asked in the, uh, have you visited Twitter uh, or Facebook or some local online media at least once in a week. If they visited uh, or logged on on those uh, websites, we consider them they are exposed to online uh, media. So these are the characteristics of my uh, our population. So uh, uh, we, we sh this is showing the distribution and the categories are used in our uh, study, and except the employment male, female uh, percentages are not very different, it's minor. So then we did some uh, bivariate analysis. So this is the first uh, slides I have for, for uh, bivariate analysis. So this is, you see that we asked six questions, and so 65% of the respondents say no to all six questions. They don't justify under any circumstances. And others people say at least somebody say one condition yes. So, so that's why it means that 35 percent of our respondents said they justify wife beating at least for one reason. And these are the, now the justification of wife beating. 
So as you see that showing disrespect for husband is the most uh, uh, mentioned uh, 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 reasons for uh, justification for wife beating, and it is both men and women like things that that's the top uh, top uh, reasons for justification. Then followed by parents in law, and there is some you see that the differences between men's and women's opinion, but the order is almost same for men and women. So. That 30 percent, 38 percent of male uh, uh, respondents justify wife beating for at least o o one reason of uh, one reason, and 31 percent of the female justified. So this difference is uh, not very significant. I mean, strongly. Uh, I mean, significant only significant at 8 percent. So this, this shows the uh, age distribution. Interestingly, there is no, we don't see any pattern in the among the females, but among the males, younger males looks like are more likely to support uh, wife, uh, not support justify wife beating compared to the younger males. We don't see any strong relationship with education. Although the women, uh, go, those who goes to university, are more likely uh, less likely to support, but it's not. Uh, statistically significant, and uh, exposure to uh, social media or online media doesn't um, make any difference. These differences are there are some differences you see, but those are not statistically significant. Employment Dr. is yeah. Can I get one? Some, one okay. Employment is not also significant. Voluntary organizations are not significant. So it looks like that, except age, none of the variables we considered uh, is significant. It means that, uh, so, and we did also multivariate analysis, and multivariate analysis also is showing the same things. So, so what we find here, first thing, when about the, uh, if it is about the prevalence rate, if we consider the prevalence rate, we see that our uh, the prevalence rate or the proportion of women who justify or men, women who justify wife beating is 30 percent as opposed to 40 percent in Egypt and 40 percent in, in Turkey. So uh, the level of justification is a little bit lower here. So now let's say wh wh what we, we are finding uh, in our result is that education, uh, membership in a voluntary organization, and uh, online exposure, all we thought that will expose uh, 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 the individual to more, uh, 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 more liberal, to be more liberal and to open up uh, uh, and to have a different view about the gender norms, but it looks like that uh, in our, in case of our uh, population, uh, study population, it doesn't have any, any significant impact. And about the uh, uh, why, why Young Qatari males are more supportive of wife beating. Let's have a quick look on these changes. This shows a big, uh, a very interesting change in uh, what is going on in Qatar. This shows that, uh, like, proportion of uh, men and women who completed post secondary education. Look at the shift here. Those who are older, men are more. Men have more education, and see, there is a like after those who are like below 40, <coughs> women are more educated. So this is very new. Mm. This phenomena is very new for this Qatari society, and Qatari's patriarchal ideology doesn't know how to deal with these new new things. This is very new for the whole generation. So it means that the new young Qatari generation, uh, uh, Qataris are facing more educated, more uh, uh, women. Uh, so that makes them a little bit little bit like challenged and and when when a group is uh, under threat or under challenge they use whatever means they uh, have to uh, justify their superiority so the concept of wife beating or the thing that wife uh, uh, women should be disciplined by uh, using uh, some physical uh, violence is kind of might be we don't know but this is on one explanation that it might coming from that kind of challenge they are facing in the in the recent days okay thank you very much bye Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohammed Nizam.